So this is an interview that Donald Trump did with Greg Kelly. And I've taken the whole interview. I've broken it down into the base components that I think are uh, the relevant pieces. So in the first clip, what I've got is Donald Trump talking about in the Rome, Georgia, I think it was, um, rally that he had. He said, I'm extending a hand out to Democrats. Well, it sounds like he was just saying that because it sounded good. Because when he gets into this, he says, you know, there's some very bad people out there talking about everybody, presumably, that doesn't like him. Here's what he said. The general election is underway right now. Yeah. 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 The other night I saw you, and I guess it was Saturday night, you said, I reached my hand out to Democrats right now if you want to join us. And that was beautiful. But it was in the middle of a, of a rally yeah. that the other side's not seeing, networks aren't caring. Only it. people like me. To reach out to them, to the people who've been lied to about you. Yeah. How are you going to do that? And are you going to show another side lied to yourself to? or change anything? So, no, hell no. During my tenure, we had the most successful economy in history. And it's very interesting. I was called, all of a sudden, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, women, men, with diploma, without diploma. Everybody was doing great. Everybody. And I was real success. And I was being called by... No contest. Some very liberal or progressive you want want to use the term they don't like liberal anymore but i'll call them whatever whatever it is from some very liberal people some people that you would never think would call greg and they wanted to get together the country was coming together and no they weren't the success is going to bring the country together God, i was and there it should come together but you have some very bad people politically on the other side some people i really think i actually think they hate the country they hate the country there are some people who can't no. get past you know, I hate to say it, but they, I don't think people, well, some do, some hate Donald Trump, but I think as the last election shows, the vast majority of people just don't like the guy, folks. And I guess he was wrong about the olive branch. You know, that's, uh, that's gone. That's, uh, that's history. So Donald Trump, um, he was asked the question as to whether or not he made any mistakes in the last administration. And as you know, there were all sorts of people. It was like a revolving door of talent, you know, 50, 60 people. I mean, he had the highest turnover of any president, I think, in history at the top levels of his government. But funny enough, it's uh, he doesn't see any problem with that. And he kind of, you know, writes it off because I was new to D.C. Um, I didn't know how all of this worked. I think I've got a pretty good handle on it now. We've got, like I said before, I got... Only the best people. Well, I've I've got even the best of the best now. Here's how it went. Um, I want to respect your time. In 2016, you did the opposite of what the political professionals would recommend. Almost every turn, and you won. And that's amazing. That's a testament to you. But is there such a thing as overconfidence? I mean, you've been right a lot, but nobody's right all the time. Is there such a thing as overconfidence? Are you, at this point, tough to advise? Or, I know you got great advisors, but have you, did you learn some negative Hell yes, he's tough to advise. Right what do you think, Greg? Wrong, and you might oh, think, Jesus. well, I'm always right. They must always be wrong. Well, they do have a hat on, and I don't produce it. Somebody else, uh, Trump was right about everything. I mean, if you look at all of these many, many things, <laughs> I've been right about everything. I've been oh. right about immigration. I've been right about things, tactics yeah. and things like that. But, uh, Never look, wrong. Uh, I listen to a lot of very smart people. I listen to people that aren't so smart. You find out they're not smart later on. Look, I've had people that are great working for me, but I've also had people where it was a mistake having them. Uh, one of 60? the things, and I, I say this, uh, very, very strongly. I feel, believe it very strongly. I came to Washington. I wasn't like in the Washington establishment. It's an establishment. I was a New York person and I didn't come here much. I was here, they say, the press says 17 times. I didn't know people like uh, normally you would. And I put great people in, but I also put people that I made a mistake with. I, I made a mistake with some people I put in. Uh, obviously, it wasn't a grave mistake because we had no wars. I got out of wars. I rebuilt the military. We defeated ISIS. You know, all the different things we did, lowest taxes ever. We got the biggest tax cuts ever or the biggest regulation cuts ever. But nevertheless, uh, I now know people. I now know, I believe, Washington probably at the upper levels uh, better than anybody. And I think I'm going to have some unbelievable people. And I have unbelievable people that want to be with us. Mm. 
No, you said that last time. You said that last time. And it's scary to me that you've got, when you say you've got unbelievable people that want to be with you, because all I see are people like Steve Miller, who were the the, the ones that thought of that whole campaign of, of separating immigrant families, you know, and that whole fiasco. I mean, I've, I've been seeing him a lot, a lot on the news. And, and you know, quite frankly, when you say you've, you've got the best of the best that really want to be with you lined up, all I see is Steve Miller at, you know, bald head, worse than mine. And man, I mean, that guy's nasty. I mean, it's, it's almost as if he's not even human. So when human, so when you say this, I'm worried. Okay. I'm worried. And then he goes on about this folks. You got to hear this. So he's talking in this clip about Victor Orban, and he doesn't really address the answer of defunding Ukraine. Victor Orban said in a conversation, Donald Trump told me that he's going to defund Ukraine. He's not going to fund them. Well, Donald Trump kind of sidestepped that with a bunch of BS. Have a listen to this. Victor Orban, uh, a couple of news items, if you don't mind. Victor Orban said that you told him that you want to cut funding for Ukraine as soon as you get there. Where's that effect? He said that in an interview. Yeah. Is he uh, correct? Is that the plan? Yeah. First of all, he's a fantastic guy. He's an autocrat. He's taken in no illegal immigrants. He take he takes in, he runs his country very tough. Like an autocrat. People don't like it, but he runs it very tough and it does very well and there's no crime. They don't have, when you look at what's According to Trump, no crime, right? Crime no crime. Street corner and no crime. Murder, death all over the place and it's going to get a lot worse because of the migrants coming in. You know, millions and millions of people coming out of prisons and coming out of uh, mental institutions and they're all coming in to the United States. We had a great time. We had uh, dinner. We get along very well. But I told him, what I told him is Europe is spending a tiny fraction of what we're spending. BS. And the European nations as a combination. Wrong, they wrong. Be the same because Donald you know, Trump, you're wrong. Approximately the same size. If you add them all up, their economy is very close to our economy. Plus, uh, they're in a lot more danger than we are. We have a, a thing called an ocean between us, right? And, oh, uh, I forgot. They don't. <laughs> so they're spending, they have $100 billion, probably more than that, less spending. No, than we no. Do. They should be spending money. I had the same thing with NATO. Which end is talking here, folks? I mean, this is ridiculous. So look at this. There's a report. This is coming to us from the IFW Kiel Institute for the World Economy. Ukraine support tracker. Europe clearly overtakes U.S. with total commitments now twice as large. And here's the graphic that shows the darker blue is where the the government, in this case, is committed um over three quarters of a percent of their gdp towards ukraine so the dark blue you can see and then you've got the medium blue and then you've got the u.s which is a lighter shade of blue just to graphically represent what's going on here so no donald trump no the u.s is not giving more than the european union and you know folks this is what's dangerous about the guy is because he'll pull this kind of stuff out from god knows where and he makes policy on it on it so this is why People like Rex Tillerson have that were in his administration just leave the administration because it's BS. You can't make administration policy based on fluff, like a bunch of crap that's not even true. You can't make up things and say, we're going to, to act based on that. And that was the scariest part to me of watching Trump go through the presidency. It's like, what what is he using for data and where is he getting his data because like in this case it's clearly wrong folks it's clearly long wrong so here's a question basically are you lonely donald trump coming from greg are you lonely human history has really and i know you have supporters uh friends family they say it's lonely at the top and i'm actually curious is it ever lonely for you? I mean, no one can fully relate to what you've been through and what you're going through. Are you ever lonely? So I was, over the years, I love history, I study history, and I was always told that Andrew Jackson, as a president, was treated the absolute worst. He was just really lambasted. And I heard Abraham Lincoln was second, but he was in a thing called the Civil War, so you can understand that, but Andrew Jackson, was really, really treated badly. In fact, his wife died during the process. I mean, a lot of people say she died because of the way they were treated. I mean, she was heartbroken and, and broken in so many other ways. And I heard that for years. 
And I looked now, even last night I was saying it, I said, there's no, I don't care, Andrew Jackson or anybody else, nobody has, when you think of the, the fake things, nobody's been treated like Trump in terms of badly. <laughs> right. Russia, 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 Ukraine, 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 everything was a scam. And it everything, says, everything was a scam. The other, impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two, all hoaxes and scams. And I said, if they ever devoted their time to making America great again, it would be a lot easier. Some people say, <laughs> sir, how do you get out of bed in the morning? Yeah. It's a war. We're fighting some very bad people, some very evil people. And it's a war. And it's a war. Everything's a scam, folks. I mean, it. Uh, the reality of that is is obviously in stark contrast to that statement. Um, everything's a scam. There's there's no merit to anything that anyone has ever said in any court of law. There, there's it, Isn't that amazing? There's just no merit to it. All these lawsuits, 91 indictments or whatever the hell it is, there's just no merit to any of it? Really? Really? I mean, by the same legal system that's processing everyone else who's a criminal, all of a sudden there's no merit to the ones, the suits that are being thrown against you. There's just no merit. I, I don't get it. And how can you be lonely at Mar-a-Lago, right? You just go downstairs and everybody loves you. You know, you sit down and have a piece of pie, a little chocolate cake with everybody. I mean, life's a breeze at Mar-a-Lago. So you just can't get lonely there. So folks, this is one where he had we're talking about the top secret documents at Mar-a-Lago that were all over the place. They were, they were up on stage. They were in the bathrooms. I mean, where weren't those documents at Mar-a-Lago? Donald Trump is making the point that we had tons of security at Mar-a-Lago. Makes it all okay, right? And then there's no comparison between Donald Trump not cooperating with, you know, the United States basically to get those documents back, not cooperating and when you contrast that with Joe Biden, who cooperated fully, of course, none of that makes any sense to either Trump or Jim Jordan, for that matter. But here's what he said. Have a listen. mar -a -Lago, we had the Secret Service. We had all sorts of security. We had everything. We had lawn people. And what he did was far more egregious. I mean, what I did, I, I had protection. I had the right to do it, in my opinion. And, Got house cleaners? And my lawyer's opinion and everything else. But when you see that the way they released him, and they say, we're going to release him, it was egregious what he did. But by the way, they released Hillary Clinton. She hammered her phones. She used uh, all sorts of acid testing and everything else. They call no. it uh, bleach bit, but it's essentially acid that will destroy everything. No, you she know, didn't. Within That's 10 miles. debunked. I mean, sh what she did was unbelievable. Nothing happens to her. Nothing happens to Bill Clinton. He took it out in his socks. You know, it was the famous socks case, which he actually ended up winning. So, so why'd you bring it up? So he won. So why'd you bring it up? And that whole thing with Hillary Clinton and acid, I mean, that's been debunked. I mean, that is no more true than Donald Trump's assumption that you can drink bleach for, you know, COVID. I mean, that, that's how ridiculous it is, folks. But always playing the victim. They're far worse than I am. You know, never mind the fact that he didn't cooperate. And he thought he was entitled to take all these documents away. You know, Mar-a-Lago is such a magical place, though. Nothing bad can ever happen there, right? So much security and all this kind of stuff. It's just endless BS from what was the prede predecessor here, as Biden likes to call him, the predecessor. Till next time, folks.